Um, so we didn't know each other. I had been once when I was very young. And it didn't go very well. And then I came back more than 20 years later. Um, out of friendship, uh, Didier de Cotigny, who was an artistic uh, kind of planning manager at the time, he persuaded me to come to us. Okay, come to a week. And it was wonderful. Loved it. Really, really enjoyed it. And Paris is home and whatever. They offered me the job. And then my first reaction was like, you're joking, you know. <laughs> and the manager, he was like, uh, Bruno, he said, no, I'm actually serious, think about it. And I was seduced by the whole thing, the Philomenie, the, the orchestra being at home. I said, whatever. And I said, okay, but I'll do three years because we don't know each other. And they might, I said, he said, the orchestra loves the way you work. And I said, yeah, I was here for three days. <laughs> so after three weeks and then after three years or, you know, yeah, they might yeah. not, you know, but uh, let's see. I said, I'll do three years. And I did three years. And and so it's really important. Um, I think it's important for me that people understand um, there was no break. We did exactly what we planned to do. And yeah, of right. course, underneath the understanding is normally you do more. And I like to do more. I mean, I've been all my jobs I've stayed a long time, except for Paris. Um, and so I looked at the situation. I'm like, there is. And again, I mean this with enormous respect. But as in any orchestra, it's like. This is a big project. There's a lot to do. There's an enormous amount to enjoy, and there's a lot of stuff to to enjoy also working on. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so either I enjoy. We did amazing programs. We had three years. We had seasons where there were 25 pieces in the program in the planning that had never been played in the history of the orchestra. You know, we really did fantastic projects. That the put it crudely, you know, the toy that is that orchestra, that choir, that concert hall, that city, it's an unbelievable gift to be able to have all of that. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. But it's like, do I, at the age of whatever I was, you know, 43, 44, it's like, am I going to stay here now 15 years and this will be my big project? Um, because that's what, if you, once you start really taking things apart, you've got to stay and see it through. It's not sure. fair. <laughs> Otherwise. Like, yeah. 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 Um, or am I not sure? Is this really where I'm going to give... My, because I hope now with 30 years experience, the next 15 years, I hope I'll stay fit and gain more experience. And that's when you have the energy really to do something. And then you get into that phase where you enjoy being the, the benevolent old connector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, sure. <laughs> at some point. And that was the question for me. And I had to, I had to take a guess on what's right. And um, and and the, the the Alps into the Grand Canyon thing. Well, what what I was trying to say with that is, I think you understand. You got two wonderful things that, in their own way, are perfect and shouldn't be changed, but they're completely different. Yeah. And and the Orchestre Paris has always been kind of known as the most international of French orchestras. Probably in some ways, the Opera Orchestra has also an incredible flexibility of color. And uh, but um, I'm like. If I stay here, probably what's going to happen is I'm going to spend the next 10 years trying to get them to play like German orchestra. And there are a lot of great German orchestras in the world. And the Orchestra Paris should be the Orchestra Paris. But I just know that I'll keep, I'll just keep nudging them towards what, what I like. And that's kind of more where your instincts are, yeah. more like a German orchestra. It's just what I grew up with, kind of thing, and it's what sure. I have in my ear, and it's what. And I was like, I'd actually spend years doing plastic surgery on a beautiful person to turn them into something that they didn't need to turn into. And actually, what they need as a music director is someone who's completely in love with what they are and wants to take that and and expand it, kind of thing. That was my that was my rationale. Sure. And yeah. um. And 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 the lovely thing for me is. I go back now quite a lot and it's pure joy to work with them. And then I'm thinking, oh my God, does that mean I made a mistake? So no, it means I did exactly the right thing, which is when you go as a guest conductor at an orchestra, you bathe in all the glorious things they have to offer. And the things that you don't think are how they should be, you don't, you, you don't think about it. You enjoy what's great. And when you're a music director, for me, you tend to be obsessed <laughs> with what... It's like, it's my problem. It's my responsibility. I have to fix this. Yeah. <laughs> and then it can kind of lead you to be a little bit... Um, to Not focused enough on what's wonderful. 
Okay, I'm telling you a lot about my psychological makeup, but I mean, no, I think that's, that's really the, it is yeah. the job. Yeah, yeah, totally. The job is to be focused on what needs to be done. And as a guest conductor, the job is to focus on what's, what's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about flying and music. Mm -hmm. um, I know you've done a lot of interviews where you talked about your job as a pilot. With yeah, but I don't think I've ever managed to get to the heart of it. So maybe you'll okay, find yeah, the way. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'd, I'd really like to try to do because I'm a bit of a flight nerd myself. Tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the background is that I worked as a call center agent for Lufthansa for a year. No, for, so I was doing a lot of standby flying. Yeah, and um, I took a flight lesson once. I just think uh, flying is fascinating yeah. as a phenomenon. Um, Nearly done. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And uh, did you ever read that book, uh, Sky Ferry, mm -hmm. by Mark Lanonek? I know Mark a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, and um, well, hang on. you wrote a very interesting article, didn't you, about music and... I saw something you wrote. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was mm. great. Thanks. Oh. Um, it's so nice when someone talks about... Obviously, it's a complicated thing, especially in the world today, but there's so much about the experience and what it brings to... We talk a lot about what flying costs right. us uh, as a community, an uh, environment, whatever, and it's very important. But... We don't talk so much about um, what it brings, and it's always got to be a balance between the two. And um, so that was why I was really, I thought I was so happy to see your article. Um, and and uh, Van Hunneke, um his book is so so unbelievably poetic. No, yeah, yeah. it was um, Simon Sharma who told me to read it, and um, and you know Sharma, he's uh, the cleverest person I. <laughs> Ever met and and you know but has an unbelievable sense of I mean his the the his ability to talk about art in any way is unparalleled and then he started eulogizing Sky Ferry it's like I have to read this book and he gives you that sensation of, of the he can find in any the most mundane aspect of of the profession or of the experience, he can show you with the beauty, right? Yeah. I mean, and that—that's it's a—it's a, it's a phenomenal thing. Yeah. Um, but he writes really good articles in the FT now, and it's not always—I mean, he can write about anything, and he just has that skill. Yeah. He's from Boston, I think. He's from uh, Massachusetts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I wrote him a few emails, and we yeah. corresponded a little yeah. bit. But okay. Well, you, you know him as well as I do. I mean, we okay. we've corresponded a bit and. And I tried to get him up here when we were doing some weird projects. But, um, and he wrote me the other day. Um, we're like, okay, we've got, finally got to get together and have a have a drink or a, a, a chat about things. But um, he's yeah. a very inspiring guy. Yeah, oh, I'm glad you're in touch with me. Well, the thing that struck me, or one of the many things that struck me about Sky Faring was the, the part where he talks about, uh, or parts where he talks about listening to music on, on mm. airplanes. And... Um, Obviously, you can't listen to music while you're piloting an airplane because it could be a distraction. But I wonder if you have music that you like to listen to when you're on an airplane or looking out the window. Um, I have the same. It's this way. I can assure you, it's not the case when I'm when I'm flying. It's really weird. Being a passenger and being a pilot are such totally different experiences. I think. A lot of people know this feeling. You're a passenger in a plane. It's an incredible place to watch a movie, read a book, or listen to music. Because there's something incredibly heightened about your emotional response to things. I never cry watching movies unless I'm <laughs> sitting in the airplane, and then I find myself unbelievably sentimental. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Like, can I assure you that I'm very, I'm cool as ice when I'm <laughs> sitting in the front. Yeah. Um, it's a very strange thing. Um, one of the things that um, that I kind of when I started learning to fly this time, like in 2014, one of the reasons was just like um, to give myself uh, a learning experience and something just a little bit away from what I've been doing for just a, just a just a, a change of air, so to speak. Um, and I remember going with a friend who's a, another Air France pilot 
years and years ago, we were doing some VFR flying in the south of France, flying along the coast towards Italy. Sorry, what's VFR? Our visual, visual flight rules.